Victoria. How are you? Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to meet you. You too. Thanks so much for taking some time with me. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. And what a cool product. Thank you. Very cool. I watched the video on it. I can't say I've bought this product in a few years, so uh, I'm out of the loop. But uh, that's very cool. It's almost like a dream come true. <laughs> yes. Women, they, they really love it. And then um, what we found too, that even if you don't have your cycle anymore, you can still use the liners and that really helps, you know, with just like day-to-day -day use and whatnot. So right. Yeah. Wow, very cool. So um, this is very generous and we're very excited and I can't wait to tell you all about it. So um, give me a little bit of background on you. I know you're, you're the CEO of Victoria Waterman of Girls Inc. And you guys have been around for over 100 years. So 2016 was your centennial. Awesome. Yes, yes. So just give me a little bit of background and history. I, I know about it, but let's tell everyone else. Okay. Our mission is to inspire all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. How cool is that? I love it. That's how <laughs> it so, so strong is is um, is is about well well being, physically, mentally, and we provide resources on staying uh, active nutrition, just just being the best you can be from from the strength point of view. We we teach uh, self defense, all kinds of things. We yes, so we are we do a lot there. Smart is academically successful, mm -hmm. so we enhance academics. We're not a school. We don't want to be a school, but we provide homework help for our girls who often have families that aren't familiar with the schoolwork, who is, <laughs> but a lot of our girls uh, come from homes where English may not be the first language and the parents would love to help them, but they can't. But we provide the time and the tutoring so that girls can uh, go home with their homework done. And we also provide a lot of support and enhancement on their academics in the areas of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. That's one of the areas in which we invest heavily in our girls. And they're learning it from the minute they walk in in kindergarten until the time they leave, whether they know it or not. Good. And bold is independence. So that's about self-esteem, being confident, and um, and, and creating a path to the future where you can support yourself and you don't have to stay in unhealthy relationships and you understand about financial matters and you're literate in every sense, including financial. I love that. that and that's really important too because a lot of times that aspect is, is not really honed in on. So the financial aspect and and just like you said, just being strong all around in education. Yes, yes, yes. We look at the whole girl holistically. I love it. We, de we develop the whole girl. So how long have you been CEO of Girl Pink? I've been in my role for about seven years. And before that, I ran an organization called Leading Women in Massachusetts. It's now a global women's leadership organization. And we provided leadership experiences and training for women in mid-sized to Fortune 500 companies. But I mentioned that really because I was the board president of Girls Inc. during that time. So I made that very unusual transition of board to staff. And I love it. I've never looked back. Wow. Best job in the world. That's awesome. That and that's how it should always feel. That I can I can see the passion and I can really tell that you're really invested in girls and so they're very lucky to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I I am passionate. <laughs> and I do love our girls and I love our mission. That's, that's great. And that's how I feel too about nano care. So even though we are um, a feminine hygiene product, we we also I guess we would be aligned with a lot of the same principles, if not all, 
um, that Girls Inc. is. So that's what really resonated with me and we really wanted to jump at the opportunity to donate over, what, 10 cases. So that's like 5,000. I have to do the math, but. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask our girls. They'll, they can do it off the top of their heads, probably. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm like, hey, can you come here and help me real quick? <laughs> I know. Try being us, right? We're working from home. Normally, we have the girls to be helping us on all of this. Now we're stuck. Oh, help me with this real quick. How do I do this in Excel? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. They on our phones, everything. Oh, yeah, especially the phones. Technology for me is, is uh, a little bit hard sometimes. I'm like, how do I do this? Like, even with Zoom, I had to set it up like three, four days ago and make sure you don't try it a couple of times on my own. Right. <laughs> Right, right. I don't know I'm a pro, but in the beginning, right. yeah, I wasn't quite as confident. <laughs> so tell me a little bit um, about how our donation is going to be used for girls. This is so important. There's, we all know, um, we've always known that the girls that we care for uh, can't afford their period products. But during, you know, normal time, their families make ends meet by improvising. So we're worried about the girls. We're worried about families who have to make unspeakable choices between uh, food and, and, and healthcare and, and basic necessities. This is a basic necessity that um, needs to be at the top of the list and sometimes can't be. And whether it's uh, for financial hardships or family dynamics or just fear of getting out and going into a store, there are so many barriers. But girls need this. Yeah. And as the experts on girls, we saw ourselves as well positioned to say, we can take this on. We can take this on. And when this is over, we're hoping that girls will Think about Girls Inc. as that organization that cared enough about them to go out and do something like this. And we're thinking about them every day. So you're making a difference in the lives of however many girls in our, how, you know, whatever it goes to. So we are very fortunate. We are getting a lot of donations, but once none none like yours so i'm fascinated by a feminine hygiene product that also reduces cramps that sounds wow where was that however many years ago <laughs> that's why we're here now we're, we're not going anywhere so yeah so that's that's fantastic but i do want you to understand the importance of this and it's not just for girls and girls we're opening this up to girls in Worcester, and Worcester is the second largest city in New England, right, right. after Boston. So what you're doing is having a, a, a wide uh, impact on girls. And um, in a small way, it's great. We're giving every girl a month's supply. Wow. And uh, the way it works, we're doing a, a grab and go. Oh, and you'll love this too. Okay. We named our drive, or we named this effort. We said, what are we going to call this? Right. So we asked our girls. We said, we need you to name this because we don't want to name this something that you're going to be embarrassed about or is weird to say. So they came up with it. And it's a, we've got a logo. It's, it's called Girl Pad. So now we say, you coming to Girl Pad on Thursday? So it sounds like you know, an iPad or a place to pad. You know, it's kind of a cool thing. And we have a little description on the bottom, but one of our, our girls came together and voted on some of these. And, and one girl uh, eventually helped with the logo. So it really does carry the voices of the girls. And this way they feel proud about sharing it as well. But the way it works now is that we have a time set up that um, families will drive up and we have it uh, set up so we have the social, safe social distancing and we've got our masks and gloves and we're six feet apart and one person gets out of the car, comes to the table, grabs a bag, it's a brown paper bag, so we make it discreet and we have a month's supply in that bag and, and the girl takes it and gets in the car and goes. And that's how we've been doing it. So now we're opening it up and we're delivering it to our uh, Youth Connect partners. So we have a collaboration with the other youth serving agencies. 
So next week we'll be also sharing supplies at the Boys and Girls Club and the YWCA and the YMCA and, and so forth. So this is a community-wide effort and uh, we're privileged and truly we're privileged to be taking the lead and uh, making this happen. Yes, and I, I agree that it's just so important. You're really making a, a huge impact and even though you're only doing it in Wooster, it's not only doing it in Wooster because I feel like other people, they take notice and they also want to give back. So you're you're giving hope, you're, giving, you're motivating people, inspiring them, and we all can't give back in, in the same way, but what other ways, if people aren't able to donate um, or businesses or individuals, how, how else can they help from Pink, and as well as Wooster or even in their own communities? Right, well, Right now, we are embarking on a brand new territory, and that's virtual programs. How can we reach our girls? We know our girls are isolated. We know they're scared. We know they're worried. Girls Inc. was a second home for these girls. They came to us every day. They were in different programs. They saw us in their schools. This is a big loss for them and they've already lost so much. So it's critical for Girls Inc. across the country to be in touch with uh, the um, girls that they serve. And so we're doing this through these Zoom types of meetings and, um, and providing content. So right now we're, so we're focusing more on really connecting. Are you okay? What do you need? How's it going? And being there and talking to them. But we see our role as, as this evolves in providing real program and content. And so Girls Inc. being a national organization and having a resource center, all of our programs are research-based. And so now we're taking that and digitizing them and able to share them with our girls. And then this summer, we're we don't know what's happening with camps and right. so forth, <laughs> but we're hoping that we'll have at least summer programs at the very least, and we will add in an academic component so that the girls can go to school in the fall refreshed and ready to learn. The, the learning loss is going to be extraordinary, and we see ourselves as part of the solution. So to answer your original question in a very long way is that we're looking for volunteers to help us be speakers, uh, empower girls. So it's not just us on a Zoom call. Imagine watching me all day long. Ooh, I wouldn't mind it. I love listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so this way we mix it up. They can hear right. from strong women, tell their stories, share their experiences, see them. Um, it's there's so much value in that, and 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 I think that that's where volunteers can step up. Like you said, those who some can support financially, some can support with products, and what else can they do? And that's an area I think that is really a new territory for all of us. I, and I really think it's awesome too because this will open it up for them to get connected to, to women and you know other organizations that maybe they didn't even know about. So right. it's making it national, it's even making it possibly international that you might hear from someone who wants to you know, participate or even give back in their own way. And I feel like time is very important. And Right, right. So, well, Girls Inc. is international to some extent. We have 80 affiliates across the country and in Canada. Wow, okay. Well, that's right. No, I'm so glad yeah. to know about Canada as well since we have a great presence there. Um, so that's something that I would love to also share with some of my other retail partners. And oh, great. Yes, yes. We're the second oldest affiliate. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> First oldest. Connecticut. Okay. Connecticut, yeah. Waterbury, Connecticut. They're just a little bit older than us. But we look pretty good for 104, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <They over 100. laughs> but you know what's funny? Our mission really hasn't changed. Now, I wouldn't say that we had a tagline 100 years ago like we do today, but 100 years ago, the organization was the Girls Club. 
and then it became Girls Clubs of America, and so it had evolved over the years. But it was it was essentially the Girls Club, and it was uh, started by industrialists, by really rich industrialist wives, who came together and said the young women in this community need a safe place to go, and they need to learn how to be women. And so they would get together and they taught them all the skills they needed at that time. How to raise the you know future generation of important male leaders, <laughs> right? But besides that, okay. So so besides that one, the rest I can I can relate to a little bit is uh, giving them the skills they need to be successful. So at that time, it was about homemaking. It was about taking care of babies. It was about uh, appreciating the arts and things like that. And so really, we're doing the same thing today. It just looks a lot different, but we're preparing our young women for what it is they need to be successful. So it looks different at a face value, but essentially our mission mission hasn't changed much. Right, and that's, and that's what's good. You stay true to the core and you evolve as needed. And I love now we're working on women leadership and, yes, <laughs> and yes. growing in that aspect too and in that space. Right, right. Yeah. What do you feel has been one of your greatest impactful moments with the girls think? I would say I know I, I'm gonna tell you no, I'm gonna tell you something that you might not expect to hear. And that is uh, I consider myself a, a student and a teacher of, of leadership. And in my role, I feel very strongly um, having the responsibility of, of preparing the next generation of women leaders. And so that is the up and coming emerging leaders, not necessarily the girls that we serve. So the more I can empower the emerging leaders in my organization, the more they're going to empower the girls. Yes. And that is where I take a lot of pride. I invest in, in the training. I do a lot of it myself. I spend a lot of time cultivating our staff. And in turn, they're doing phenomenal things with the girls. I love the girls too, but really, if I were to really look at that, um, that would be it. And I have special relationships with some of the girls who've been there for so, for so many years and I feel like they've grown up there. And I think of Ella, I always think of her as eight. Here she is, 14, and designing, you know, an, a girl pad logo for us. <laughs> awesome! And you guys, just, you guys made that happen too. So that's that's a really proud moment that you're really impacting with all of these girls. How how many would you say stay with you for? What is the average length of time that they'll stay? Um, well, this year we've had our first graduate uh, who started in kindergarten. And yeah, all the way through. And so that's a product of really just having programs for every age that would be engaging. So that's part of our our mission as well is creating that pipeline and that opportunity for them. And we've got it now. And so now we're going to start seeing those girls who start at kindergarten and, and in high school, but quite a few. One of our strongest programs of which we're very proud and is really our capstone program is called Eureka. And this is our five year STEM intensive leadership program. So these girls join us in eighth grade and they stay with us through high school graduation. That's a huge commitment. Can you imagine being in eighth grade and making a five-year commitment to anything? No. Anything. <laughs> not nothing. Not even high school, barely. You're like, oh, right. you no, know, can I, can nothing. I? Nothing. <laughs> and the parents as well, because right. they have to drive them there and support them and all of that. So this program, starts with the first two summers, the girls are at college campuses. Now in Worcester, we're very rich with colleges. So the girls spend a week at four different colleges learning from college teachers. And it's 50% of it is STEM related. 
The other 50% is personal development and some type of athletics. So we require swimming instructions for our girls. So we have a pool, we also have a lake at our camp, but the uh, personal development is what our staff is working on as well. Then they meet every year, um, excuse me, every month during the school year. So we've got five cohorts of this happening every year. Then the second two summers, uh, we have them out in, in jobs and doing externships and job shadowing and out in the community. So we're very fortunate in our geography and in our community to have such uh, generous partners. Companies like Dell, Boston Scientific, I'm thinking of St. Cobain, some Fallon, some companies that you know might be widely recognized, take our girls and give them these job shadowing experiences. And then the final year, we have them create their own opportunity and through the networking skills that we have taught them. So each year, we throw them a college shower. And the reason for that is we know that traditionally, women are showered when they get married or have babies. Well, at Girls Inc., we think graduating from high school and moving on to something more is something to celebrate. And so we literally throw them a shower. We have a registry and people can purchase items on, on the Amazon wish list. We give them laundry baskets filled with comforters, towels, extension cords. Remember the shower caddy? The shower caddy, um, first aid kits, everything they need to go to college. Uh, so on the first day, when they're meeting their roommates, they are on par. They they're showing fine. up, no yeah. disparity. They're showing up with everything they need so that they can focus on their schoolwork. Wow. And that's something that our community comes together with and we celebrate. Now this year, oh, I don't know, our poor seniors, they're missing out on everything. Right. Their proms, their graduations, everything. So. We have postponed it to July. Okay. And, you know, at the very worst, this is what I'm thinking because we got to plan for it, but at the very worst, we'll do a virtual recognition and we'll just mail them a check this year and they'll buy their own items. So it's not as much fun, but at least they'll get the recognition and know that we're there to provide the support they need to buy the things that they need. Because let's face it, paying for college is just as much as a mortgage or having a baby. It is. It yeah. Is. But let me tell you about some of the results. So in this program, we've had over 50 girls graduate now. We've been doing this program for about five years or so, six, seven, whatever it is. Uh, we've had over 50 girls graduate. They've received as a cohort over three million dollars in scholarships. Wow. Fifteen have been full pay scholarships and three are in Ivy Leagues. Full pay. Fifty percent are first generation in their families to go to college and um, 100% graduated high school, which just that in itself is phenomenal. 100% of them are going on for something. Now we've actually changed the wording now to be career and college shower because we've got a lot of girls who are going toward um, the military and they're joining um, all branches and uh, or they're going on to some kind of tech or trade school, which is phenomenal. So uh, we, we do encourage women in trades and women in construction and things like that. A college degree isn't the right option and path for everybody. So now we've changed it a little bit, but 100% of them have gone on to all of those things. To which these girls, um, well, let me back up for a second. The general rule of, uh, rule of thumb on the cost of this program is $2,000 per girl per year. So if a girl finishes this program in five years, the investment is $10,000 of which the family pays absolutely zero. Oh. And that's, that's such a relief. They can, they can just focus. A lot of times financial stress just really takes away from the importance of what they're working on. So.
myself. Right, right. So we say our mission is to inspire all girls to be strong, smart, and bold, but 60% of our girls are from under-resourced families, and those are the girls that we care about. So all of our programs benefit all girls. And in the summer, in fact, our demographics change drastically because um, our summer camp is licensed a little bit different, but because um, a lot of the families may work in Worcester, but live in the suburban areas outside, families choose to bring their daughters to Girls Inc. for summer camp when they have many other choices, but they like the girls only environment they like the research-based program, they like the diversity in the organization, and so, so we have you know, a great healthy mix in the summer, which is, which is really nice, it's really nice to see it just overall. But the, really the overall mission of Girls Inc. in general is to seek out those, the underserved populations. Those are the girls we care about, the girls who are falling through the cracks, the girls are just as smart as everybody else, but need a chance. The girls who have so much potential, but don't have those contacts. Their families don't have those contacts. They just aren't exposed. They can't imagine what um, somebody in, you know, an engineering position might do. Right. They wouldn't even consider that. But we introduce them to those role models. And it's not us, it's the role models who are saying, you can do it. Right. I did it, you can do it. Exactly. So that's really the importance. I feel that we give them access. Yes, I, I, I can agree to that wholly, especially with everything you've been telling me. So, and it's also awesome because it's a trickle down effect, it's compounding because they're getting all of, all of this knowledge and support and I'm sure that they're going to also want to give back and, and just pay it forward. They come back in the summer as camp counselors. They come back when we have advocacy days at the State House and so forth. We'll call the girls who are going to college in Boston. They're all over. They're, they're, and they speak so eloquently about their experience. We barely have to coach them. They just, <laughs> they're just wonderful. But they take so much pride in being our spokespeople. And, um, and I think I, I, we've made such an, a, a difference in their lives that they will always give back. They will always give back. And one of them is going to be in my role someday. Uh-oh. Yeah, I can retire someday. Exactly. <laughs> someday, right? It's like, but you love doing it too much. You want to be there for yeah. <laughs> But there's hope. There's hope. I'm training my replacement. Right. I got about 10,000 to choose from. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> we yeah. <know>. Right, right. <laughs> so, what what else do you do you want to share with with our community? And you know, we're also going to be sharing with your community. But we are just so humbled and really, really proud to, to be working alongside with you and being able to pass these out and you know make sure we share it with with everyone. What what else do you have to say for our sisterhood and? the nano care and nano, nano pad lovers. I would like you to watch my TED talk and share it. Yes. It's 12 minutes. It's called Today's Girls Are Tomorrow's Leaders. And I make a very compelling case on why we need to rally around our girls today so that they can be leaders tomorrow. And there's a very different twist in there on how we're missing the boat on advancing women leaders. And uh, so I'd love for you to watch it and to share it in your network. Today's girls are tomorrow's leaders. Awesome. And we will put that link there. And then also tell us how um, we can learn more about Girls Inc. in Worcester as well as the communities that we live in. Okay, so Girls Inc. of Worcester, most people don't know how to spell it, but if you start Girls Inc. of W-O-R, it'll probably come up. So it's <laughs> www.girlsincworcester.org, and it is spelled W-O-R-C-E-S-T-E-R, or on Facebook. We're in all social media channels, so you can just look us up and see it there. Our national organization is easier. It's girlsinc.org. 
And so if you look that up and if you put your zip code in, it'll tell you but the girls think that is that is in your backyard where you can volunteer and and help and be a resource. Wonderful. Well, I am just very happy to have spoken with you today. Thank you so much. You you've made my day even brighter. It's a little bit gloomy here, but you've made my day brighter. And Thank you. Same here. This was the best part of the day. I enjoyed talking with you. Yes, it was wonderful speaking with you. We're so happy to be able to help, and I hope that we are able to help um, maybe again in you know, the next several months. But we have each other's contact, and we'll reach out. Yes. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day. You have a wonderful Bye. day. Bye now.